Hello, my name is Mrs Kershaw and today we're going to look at the required practical for making soluble salt. This is an acid base reaction. So for this one we are going to use our sulfuric acid and for our base in this case we are going to use copper oxide. Now the sulfuric acid and the copper oxide will react to form the salt, copper sulfate. But as you will have seen before, copper sulfate is a blue solution that's soluble in water. So in the second part of the practical, we will need to remove the salt from the water. First of all then, we're going to create our salt. And to do that, we are going to need a Bunsen burner. So I have a heat mat, a tripod and a gauze. I have a Bunsen burner, making sure that if I light, when I light it, I light it on a yellow flame. Right, so first of all, I'm going to take approximately 50 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid. This isn't a quantitative experiment, so I don't have to be super accurate. You can see that sulfuric acid is colourless. So first of all, I am going to heat the sulfuric acid. I'm not going to boil it because we don't want fumes of sulfuric acid being produced. And I'm going to heat it on a blue flame. Once you've heated your sulfuric acid, you can then turn off the Bunsen burner. And we are now going to add copper oxide. Now we need to do this until the copper oxide is in excess. And we'll know this because it will stop reacting. I'll give it a stir. So you can see now that we have a blue solution, so we've seen a change in colour, and we still have some of the black copper oxide in the bottom of the beaker. So that tells us that all the sulfuric acid has reacted with the copper oxide. We now need to remove this excess, and we do this by filtering using a filter paper and a funnel. we see now that we have our blue copper sulfate solution, something you will have seen before, and on our filter paper we still have the black copper oxide that was in excess. Now in this kind of experiment we always have the solid in excess because it's easy to remove by filtration. If we'd added the liquid in excess then separating two liquids becomes more complicated. So we said at the beginning we were making a soluble salt. So I now have copper sulfate dissolved in water and I need to remove that water. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a water bath and an evaporating basin. So here I just have water that will gently heat this evaporating basin I'm going to put in some of the copper sulfate solution and then light my Bunsen burner again. We always heat on a blue flame, so I'm going to change it to a roaring flame. Now, one thing to be really careful about in this and the way that students lose a lot of marks is they say that they evaporate off all the water and we don't do that. All we do is we evaporate a little bit of the water to concentrate the solution and then we leave the solution on the side to crystallise and form copper sulphate crystals.
At this point, you can see that we've just started to evaporate a little part of the liquid. You can see a little bit round the side of the evaporating basin. That tells us that we've started to concentrate the liquid and some of the water has started to evaporate. So at that point, we remove the gas, take the evaporating basin once it's cooled down and put it on a windowsill to allow it to evaporate over the next couple of days and for crystals to form.